Okay, as promised, the instructions on how to assemble the uh, EcoBot, EconoBot. First off, you simply have to take this piece, which you've printed, and attach the upper support to it, which basically means just lining up these holes and then using the self tapping screws, screw them in. I tend not to tighten it all the way until I get all four screws started. and tighten it down doesn't really matter when you do this but go ahead and snap in your marble and then the servos they mount like so in such a way that their hubs are both in forward of the tail ball and once again we just use four screws and I will get them started so now you can see I've got it firmly attached uh, now comes the wheels now notice when I designed the uh, the uh, STL files I made the hole relatively small because sometimes I like to use these more economy servos like this and these little economy servos have a smaller screw. These are really nice. These are the ones that are have an adjustable center on them. They've got ball bearings. They're really super, uh, super nice servos, and they're only an extra dollar a piece. I think they're like twelve, maybe thirteen a dollars a piece. But still the same spline, so it should press on just fine. Um, there they go. And then the small screws go in. Okay, and like I was saying, or meant to say, I actually drilled these out just a little bit, just by hand, twisting a, a drill in there to make that slightly larger for that type of screw. And here you are, you've already got a chassis, um, which you can use. The batteries, of course, will just set right in there. And we have a whole bunch of motherboards that fit on here. There's one that lines up perfectly that's got a PIC processor on it, if you're into that. Here's one that is currently got a basic X on it, but it'll also run a basic stamp. Here's the one I like the most. This one's got a um, TNC 2.0, which is uh, Arduino compatible. And this one, a little over the top if you're into it, but it's, got, it's a TNC 3.0, um, which is really cool. It's got some selectable 3.3 volt and 5 volt uh, uh, power supplies for your analog sensors. But I'm going to set those aside for now so we can continue putting together the other accessories. I'll show you that if you were using this as a sumo bot, you would print this out, and of course it would just mount on here like this with a uh, screw going right through there. Now you've got your sumo bot, and if you were going to be using uh, scanners, this these two holes here on the side are where this flat plate attaches that you can use to hold on the scanning head, which I think is included in it as well. Okay, but moving on, let's go ahead and put this on. This piece holds the servo that pulls the fire extinguisher down. Okay, so now we have to attach the the plate that holds the servo that pulls the fire extinguisher. This actually goes on the bottom. Okay, so get some. I think they're three quarter inch long 440 screws. It's a bit of a hassle. They go on like this, and then some nuts, and one 
right here. And a nut. And tighten them up. Okay. And now you're ready for this servo. Whoops. Need to make sure that it's off centered so that the horn will be towards center, like that. And attach it with four screws. Okay, so now we have to attach the the wire to the horn. This is kind of important. There's a side that's got the ridges that grab hold of these ridges. That should face down. This wire is going to come up from the bottom so it lays flush down like this. And then we screw it onto the surfo servo. I'm going to put it oops, I'm going to put it about midway. But you can adjust it if you need more torque, move it toward the screw. If you need more draw, move it away from the screw. And then of course this plate, which allows the wire to move, sits just like that so it has the freedom to move back and forth. Okay, <clears throat> so now we can attach the uh, the plate that holds all the sensors. Um, you can see it's got uh, some several holes up here. These are uh, set so that you can screw a 256 screw into them. This is where sensors like uh, oh, grab one. these little guys go. They just screw into there like that. And then the sharp sensors will be able to screw into these holes here. I have taken an already uh, screwed in a self-tapping 440 screw to cut some threads because it turns out that's a little long for these little 3 8 inch screws and I'm going to use a longer screw, a half inch and then screw it in like this and another one the holes are on my printer just barely big enough it's like it almost slides through but you actually do have to turn it in. And what I like to do, so it's a little bit of a, as you're building it, it works a little bit like a, the hood of a car, is get it sort of tight so it'll stay uh, while you're working so you can pop it up like that. And then these wires all conveniently go through here so they're out of the way. So, and the last one, okay, and actually I ran them through this piece as well, so ultimately they'll come up to the motherboards that you put on there. Last, on the robot body, is this piece and it just sits on here like this goes in these through holes and four screws go into this okay and now it's ready um, once again this top piece um, will hold any one of another uh, bunch of motherboards um, we can still use this uh, basic X or uh, just the basic stamp. Basic stamp. You can use a pick based one if you're into that. They're lots of fun. Uh, you can use an Arduino compatible Teensy, or you can use a 2.0 or a uh, Arduino Arduino compatible Teensy 3.0. Now all those fit right on there. And I suppose if you really wanted to. Uh, you can use just a plain Arduino board or whatever, although I didn't make it so it fit that one in particular. Um, and then now, the last piece, I've already clamped this on. I think that's relatively obvious. Um, the two pieces clamped together go around the pump. 
and this can be a bit cumbersome you have to kind of go in on the side we can let that plate slip that that goes like that and this handle just clips in and voila it is now ready for your motherboard and your sensors and uh, you can put out a fire <laughs>